So for factoring, there are just some uh, basic factorings and then eventually you will be dealing with much uh, complex or the complex factoring. But for now, so what is the basics of factoring? Let's pick an example. So negative 2 xy minus 10x. If I have to put it into simple terms, factoring is like uh, taking the common value from each term okay, or common expression. If you look at negative 2xy and 10x, what is common to negative 2xy and 10x? Like in terms of letters, what do you see is common? So this is your first and this is your second. So what is common in the first and the second? What's common? So just pick what is in the first and is also in the second. I have negative 2xy and then minus 10x. No? Common, just the common. What is the same with first term and second term? Like you can see it on the first and you can see it on the second. What number or letter? Mm, well, just pick the common. What is the same in the first and the second? The x. Okay. So take note of the x. That is a common. And we will refer it as a common factor. Okay. But it's not only just for the letters. Now for the numbers, you have to look for the common factor of 2 and 10. Common factor means the number that can divide 2 and the number that can divide 10 at the same time. So what can divide 2 and 10 at the same time? If I have to put them in this way, what do you think should the number here? This is a common factor. 2, right? Because 2 can divide 2 and 2 can divide 10. So 2 is a common factor. Now, with the inclusion of the negative sign, we can, or the minus sign, we can carry that sign okay, as a common factor. So what we found, we have negative, both negative, right? And then common divisor or factor for the numbers is 2. And then I also have x. Okay, now, when you factor out, we, we call it factoring it out. There will be an expression that will be left after putting, or after factoring rather, after factoring the minus 2x. So, you can simply look at it in this way. If I have to take away minus 2x, what's left in the first one? Y. Y. Now, if I have negative 10 and then factor out 2, meaning you're dividing it by 2, like if I use this, what will be the number here? 5. 5. So if I factor out 2, I have 5. So I, fa I factor negative 2, so I have positive 5. Correct? Now, x is a common factor, right? So x will no longer be there. So I have y plus 5. Now, the good thing about factoring exercises is that you can actually check if you did it right. So, so this is our answer. And to check if this is correct, we distribute again. Okay, but this is already the final answer. But just for you to check, so I distribute, I get negative 2xy, I distribute, I get negative 10x. You can actually see if your signs are correct. So is that the first, uh, is that the problem given? Yes, right? So that means our factors, or our factoring process is correct. Now sometimes, even if you factor out something, you might feel like, oh, it's correct. Make sure that you can no longer take away from y and 5 at the same time. There's no common value for y and 5 except for 1. Okay, so this is the final answer. So this method is what we call the uh, factoring the common factor.
or to make it more specific, the greatest common factor, GCF. Greatest common factor. And you do that for the letters and the numbers. Okay, is it clear? Okay, let's look at the next one. So the next example is 8A plus 64. Okay, so we'll be taking out some uh, or a factor. So what do you think will be a common factor for 8 and 64? 8, right? It can divide 8 and it can divide 64. For the letters, do you see an A and A in the first and the second? No, right? So you cannot factor out A. So the only common factor, the greatest common factor is 8. So what will you put inside the parentheses? If I factor out 8 from 8A, eight what's left? 8 plus 64. A plus? 8. 8, right? And if you check, 8A, 64, which is correct. So the answer is correct. See? It becomes easier. And then, uh, let us see. 4m minus 6my minus 18mz. So sometimes there can be three terms, but the procedure will be the same. Okay, let's look at the numbers. What is common to 4, 6, and 18? A number that can divide 4, 6, and 18. Two, right? So I can have two. What about for the letters? Any common letter to the three terms? M. M. What about Y? No, right? Because it's only in the second. What about Z? No. Okay, so we have only M. So we have something remains here. Well, what will be the remaining expression for 4M if you factor out 2M? If I put m here, then 2m times m will become 2m squared and not 4m. Remember, we are factoring out m. So what will happen to 4m? So just consider, what should you put here? So that when you multiply this, it goes back to 4m. 2. 2. And that is the same as saying 4m divided by 2m is 2. What is negative 6my divided by 2m? Or if I factor out 2m, what's left? 3. 3? Hmm? I thought we were moving out the m. 3 y. What is the sign, positive or negative? Negative, because it's negative divided by positive. So negative 3, y. What about 18, mz? Negative 9, m. Why m? I thought oh, we were factoring z. Okay, negative 9, z. Now, to avoid confusion, since you are factoring out m, you can cross out all the m. Just for you to not be confused. Okay, but doing that is not actually mathematically correct, but just for you to, to understand what's happening. So if you factor out M, then that means M will no longer be in the remaining expressions. Okay? And if we check 2M times M at a times 2 is 4M, 2M times negative 3Y is negative 6MY, and the same for the third term. So you will see that it's correct. Then, if you check the numbers here, by the way, there are no more common factors of the 2, 3, and 9. 3 and 9 is 3, but we need to satisfy all the 3. Okay. Let's look at 
Okay, letter D. 3x y minus 2 and then plus 4 times y minus 2. Now, this is not simplifying expressions. So, do not try to distribute. Okay? This is factoring expressions. Now, I want you to look at it this way. This is your first group and this is your second group. What is common in the first group and in the second group? Just y. Y minus two. Y minus two. It's this group, y minus two. So I can factor out y minus two. Now can I do something with three x and four? Can I factor out something from three x and four? No, right? There's no common factor. So we are factoring out the y minus two. So, what will happen to our first term? Remember the example before it? With the m? What happened to our m? That's the same thing that will happen to our y minus 2. So, focusing here, what will be the remaining expression if we factor out y minus 2? 3x. It's like removing this. And then we do the same here. So what's left in the second term? Positive 4. So you can do this uh, if you are confused with like how to, to identify what's left in the expression. You're factoring it out. Okay. And then uh, the next one, I expect that you can do this on your own. But let's do it here. So letter E, we have 2 times 3x minus 1 minus y times 3x minus 1. Remember, we're not distributing. So what is the common factor? 3x minus 3x minus 1. Okay, so what's left in the first? 2 and negative y. So done with factoring. See? So that's everything that we need to study for this topic. So your factoring only focuses on the common factor. There are many uh, types of factoring, but I think that's covered in your type 2. Okay, so simplifying and factoring. So actually, in terms of relationship with the two processes, uh, factoring is the reverse of simplifying or vice versa, simplifying the reverse of factoring. Okay, that's how when we check, remember, we distributed the expression. So the reverse operation. Okay, so I'll give you a 10 minute break. Okay, and then, so if you want to go over the, the worksheet, just go over it and then I'll give you another set of exercises after.